lose every single day. Google family, show me the way. What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marv. Today, we're going to be talking about a lot of explosive subjects, one of them uh, being China invading Taiwan and the possible situation happening right now in Canada. Is it real? If it is, we're in big trouble. We'll be right back with that and the mystery object that just passed the ISS, or at least supposedly. Show me the way. All right, all right, all right. What is going on, guys? My name is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Uh, to abruptly get into it, we have to get into this a lot faster than usual because uh, obviously my co host is in the East Coast. You guys, it's almost midnight. Uh, over here on the Pacific Coast, it is about 9 o'clock or 9 30 almost. Uh, today, we had a ton of things go down, um, most of which is not being reported. Now, I'm also going to briefly touch on, uh, of course, the fire in Chicago. Uh, if you guys did not see that, uh, very odd fire in a tunnel. I don't know if it was from an accident, uh, but I did tweet out video of that on my Twitter. It was actually uh, pretty uh, crazy footage because it's in one of these underground tunnels, and you can see a wall of smoke. After the wall, you can't see anything on the tunnel. That happened today. Uh, a building in South Korea had a straight-up line lit down the middle, looks exactly what happened to uh, that Chinese building with the rogue lightning strike that looks like uh, Fruit Ninja took a, a chop right through it. Extremely weird stuff. But just to remind you, uh, first, before we get into the crazy news, uh, make sure that you know nothing in this show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself, Dex, or anyone else with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. With that being said, if you're not getting notifications from YouTube or DLive, make sure to get ours. We actually have our own push notifications. You can sign up for marfuglenews.com uh, push notifications there. You can also sign up for our email alerts. Uh, normally, email alerts are sent out and it's just, you know, BS. Uh, we try to make uh, extreme value of them. We try to only send them when there is value. Uh, again, we have larger creators like High Impact Flicks, Edge of Wonder, Jacob Israel. Uh, I even talked to Hexologists about doing one, uh, that sending those out as uh, articles written by them. So make sure to sign up for the email alerts as well. That's at the top bar. Now, if you want to follow along, there's a lot of stuff here that that we need to unpack. Uh, you might, <clears throat> it might go by faster than you want it to. You can actually go to our website. It's all organized by thumbnail. So when you see this thumbnail uh, with this gentleman looking out the ISS at this crazy object, uh, again, that is, by the way, that is a picture that I produced. I made that picture. It's not actually him looking out the window at that, just so no one is confused. Uh, in fact, we'll look at the actual instance of something flying by. It might actually be worse than that. It might be uh, crazier than that. But again, I've, I've got to be able to do a uh, thumbnail that is unique. Otherwise, they'll get me for copy. All right. Uh, let's see here. For some reason, this is all swooped over. So again, this is our website. You can click on this, what just passed the ISS. Uh, again, actually, this is not even the main story. I think uh, China in uh, Canada and all of this other stuff is going on there, but they don't want that on there. Uh, again, it, this has every single tweet, every single video, every single piece, article that we have here on the show. There's a backup for that, a bibliography of sorts on our website. So then you can access it later on. You can follow along on a second device. Uh, again, and then you can actually uh, go back if you want to take your time and unpack the show in your time. You, you, again, you don't have to watch when we're live. Uh, one more thing too as well, uh, we need your support. We are trying to grow as an independent news agency, but also uh, we are building a system to allow everybody to communicate that is not run by anybody. Uh, again, we uh, ended up getting booted off of Discord because of the amount of military in our group. Uh, which was wrong in my opinion, but again, we're not going to sit around and moan about it. We're going to do something about it ourselves. Uh, what that requires, which we did not realize in the beginning, uh, is pretty much an investment on our part. So thank you guys, all of you that support on the right side, all of our sponsors are there if you feel like it. Otherwise, there is no requirement to do anything to donate anything. 
All right, let's get right into it. Let's introduce Dex. Dex, I'm going to uh, talk to you about China real quick before you get to the phones. Again, this is a live show. You can actually go to the phone number down below. Uh, that is 2244 marf uh, Dex, are you there and can we do a sound check? Uh, hello, Adam. I'm here and hello, Fugal fam. So... <clears throat> I don't know if you even know about half of this stuff that's been flying around right now uh, about they say that because of legislation that China is up in Canada amassing troops. This is the rumor. This is not fact. Uh, again, I wanted to wait to confirm a lot of this. Uh, again, by now, it could be have uh, it could have been proven by now. Uh, but a lot of people are talking about this because of some things that were said. Uh, again, I haven't seen other YouTubers. If there's other YouTubers saying it's 100% fact, uh, that's their thing. I haven't seen them yet. I do know James Munder did a video, and I think he believes what he heard, so I don't have all the information on it. But what was being said is that there were, uh, in fact, it, it said that there was Chinese troops amassing up above in Canada, and people would go, well, how would they do that? It's Canada. It's our ally. Well, apparently there was legislation that let them buy property and all of this, and they were able to use property property or a big place of property uh, along the border to do this. Do I believe it? Not yet. Absolutely not. I'm going to confirm it uh, before I say anything about it. What is crazy, though, is right before this, about 24 hours before this, is someone told me, somebody in our military group, said that there is a drill. Uh, again, there's lots of drills that the United States do, does, so I, I don't, uh, again, this isn't to freak anybody out. I do not think it's public because I've been trying to look it up. I did confirm with at least one other military member that they're going to be doing an invasion drill. Now, that sounds crazy, right? But at the same time, there's contingency plans for everything. Like I've always said, there's contingency plans for even if UFO drops down, uh, you know, if if a uh, an asteroid hits, all of these things the military prepares for, just like they drill with no GPS and no power and all of this. What was being said is that they were drilling on how fast they could get convoys of defensive equipment to the West Coast, and they were going to set up and do a mock thing. The thing that this guy said, though, was that he did not believe it was a drill. Do I believe it? Again, I haven't confirmed it. So I did think that that was worth at least uh, sharing as far as we got there. And then today, then we have this whole new thing of people saying this thing is going on in Canada. I would say let, let's hold our breath. What do you, did you hear about well, any of this, Dex? Yeah, you know, there's an article um, from back in April, I remember, and I just popped it up in the screener for you if you want to pull it. But it was uh, it was talking about this legislation with Can with Canada and them allowing uh, Chinese troops to protect their own uh, interests inside of Canada. So maybe that is probably the ruling that is fueling this uh, thought or this conversation that we're trying to vet and figure out if there's really a large number. Um, but if you think, I guess the way I'm reading it, it sounds like this act allows them to have troops protect their own interests that are in the, in the country. Now <clears throat> it says Canada today invaded by these troops, right? It says, Maybe they're finally getting rid of us. Two seconds to a minute. Is, okay, it says the Canadian Armed Forces, or CAF, has taken a more aggressive approach than other federal departments to the global pandemic as a force, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. Under the terms of Foreign Investment Protection Act, this is where it is, a bilateral treaty that was ratified with China by the Trudeau uh, government in 2019, Chinese security forces can be stationed on Canadian soil to protect vital Chinese investments without the knowledge or consent of local authorities. Are we kidding here, folks? This is insanity. Was, did, was this mentioned? I guarantee you if T-Man, uh, if Trudeau and, and this guy had a meeting, this would be like, uh, how about no? They're not our ally. They're not our ally just in general. They are somebody we do business with. You do not allow them to have troops on your soil, especially with the uh, country on the other side of the border. And it's most of the time an imaginary border. You're talking about a country that there is an actual possibility of invasion. 
If it wasn't a possibility, we wouldn't drill for it and we wouldn't practice and we wouldn't do all these things. So this is incredibly stupid. Sorry. This is just like, I can't believe this is real. But do they have millions of troops amassing? We don't know nothing yet. And I doubt that that's the case. Uh, but I, I believe that this is popping up because of this treaty. And how would we know? Since apparently they don't even have to tell local authorities. They could amass thousands and thousands of troops in the areas they own. And I guarantee you, these aren't like little buildings. These are probably acres and acres and acres of land. They could literally set up shop or a forward operating base. What in the hell? And you would think, oh, oh, well, maybe it has a clause in there that they're not supposed to set up a base or something. I don't know if that's in there, but you would think they would put something like that, right? This sounds insane. So, um, I certainly hope that's not the, the situation. Here is what could happen if China invaded Taiwan. Now, a lot of people are talking about this right now because it is the tensions are extremely high right now. And with everything that's going on inside our country, if I was not uh, our ally, I would be looking at us right now when we're the most divided and uh, the least put together. I think that, uh, of course, our military is taking great leaps and bounds and catching up again. But I, I hope you guys remember for eight years in the previous presidency, uh, it was a strategic choice because everything was all PC uh, to dismantle a lot of our forces. It's almost like it was planned or something. China now has the largest Navy, which as of two years ago, that would have been like, ha ha ha, China having the largest Navy. That was a joke. That was like people were like, yeah, USA. But apparently now they have built ships so fast that they are now uh, the largest Navy. But yet, for two and a half, three years, I've been saying that they're preparing for this. And people say, oh, where is it? Where is it, man? Every single day, something more comes out. And I've been persecuted. I've been made fun of. I've had family think I'm nuts. You guys all know. If you guys have family and friends that don't think alike, then it's just the worst thing in the world if you don't think exactly like everyone else. That's why I formed this. That's why we have such a, an awesome community. Is Even if somebody uh, does not believe in the same candidate or doesn't believe in the same theories or religions or whatever, we listen to them and then we say our piece and then, boom, we're still friends. It's really that easy if you can stop all the triggers, if you stop getting triggered by everything. I see. I even see you know old school Fugel family members uh, even in this time, it's hard for them not to be triggered. They all of a sudden get triggered. And I can see it subconsciously leaking out that they're triggered and they're mad, but they don't really want to say it. They're being passive aggressive. So if you can control the, the triggers, then we can get a lot much more done. I think this is about to, uh, about to step up. And then we have the day that we we're about to vote. Now, it says Xi Jinping's uh, party, we'll just call it a party, has threatened to invade Taiwan for more than seven decades. Now fears are growing among analysts, officials, and investors that it might actually follow through over the next few years, potentially triggering a conflict with the U.S. And I mean full on, that's a, a WW3 there. In September, People's uh, Liberation aircraft repeatedly breached the median line in the Taiwan Strait, eliminating a de facto buffer zone that has kept peace for decades. So they actually pushed the line and pushed the boundaries on something they actually didn't even push the lines on uh, over the last uh, two decades. It says the party-run Global Times newspaper, which is their big state-affiliated uh, government-run newspaper, has given a picture of what could come, urging China's Air Force to patrol the skies over Taiwan and, quote, achieve reunification through military means. Again, if you don't see that here, that's, they're, they're saying this on a daily basis now. Before, you know, they you would see something like this uh, said maybe once a month or once a year even. I think 2017 was one year where we didn't hear really much 
I, or maybe it was 2016. We didn't hear much of any of it. Now it is on a daily basis that we are hearing the officials, the top of the top of the government, including Xi Jinping, saying things that are basically saying, we're ready to go. We're doing this. Tell your families to, uh, or tell your, tell the soldiers to tell their families goodbyes, get our, our military prepped and ready. We're going to conflict. Look at what they're doing financially. When they cut the financial ties, that's when you really need to start worrying. Uh, <clears throat> for example, Australia was the only uh, country or one of the first, at least the first, to say, hey, China, instead of having this three-letter agency that we don't trust do the in official investigation into CV, let's have a third party do it. China was like, oh, let's... Uh, put an 80% tariff on everything going to Australia. Basically screwing Australia out of all of the stuff they were getting from China. That's a pretty big move. And the reason they did that is because they aren't playing around anymore. That's my opinion. If you have a different one, if you think that this is all a distraction, which, again, in the truth community, I see a lot of people... They literally call everything a distraction. At some point, you have to take, you kind of have to pick which one you actually think is going to happen. And I believe that uh, this is all part of a bigger plan and it is part of stuff that's local here in the U.S. Again, there's people that watch from all over the world. So you guys in Europe, you're going to be affected. You will be pulled in. You in Canada will be pulled in. You in Australia will be pulled in. You're all, all of our allies. Everybody that's watching this, almost everybody in the world that watches my show is an ally country. Uh, Australia, the folks that have called in have told us, you know, you guys are our first line of defense. Well, now they're ch trying to chop up things and put their places strategically. Uh, we are putting stuff strategically. Think about it. It only makes sense that all this stuff is going on. We're putting our artillery in uh, Al Alaska in sight of the Russian border. We've got all of these things set up. Now I'm hearing that they're going to do these defensive measures on the West Coast. Uh, you've got, of course, Xi Jinping doing all these different things. Global Times saying all of this stuff. So, again, do you think it's a possibility? Do you think it's a high probability? That's, that's my opinion. Again, that's not a fact. It's yes, say that one yeah. more time. Hey, Adam, I'm here. So uh, in this uh, article that you and I were going over before the show, there's that uh, there's a, an image down below, not this article, the one about uh, China. I got it that's, up. Ta that's Taiwan's what... best landing sites. Yeah. Did you did you cover that? No, I did not. I no, totally no. Forgot. Go go further down. Keep going. Remember the other one we talked about that shows that, you know, how we've talked about this on the show so much about China replicating um, these different locations around the world. They've actually replicated an entire. Yeah, that's the picture we were talking about that that if you read the caption on it, just read that out loud for everybody. It says a Chinese military training complex in Inner Mongolia, shown in this satellite image taken on September 29th, includes a full-scale replica of targets such as Taiwan's presidential office building. Do we need to say more? <clears throat> and it just so happens that we're drilling to defend ourselves from an actual invasion? We're drilling to fight without power. We're drilling to fight without GPS. We are drilling for uh, a West Coast upheaval. So it's all again because it's all contingency planning. Okay. And they have upped their defenses extremely well. So in the last two years, if you actually look at what if one thing that I would love to see is if we put together and I think if it would be awesome if we did have a full on staff to put together some of this stuff, researchers, I of course can ask you guys to do it, but it will be broken apart in 50 different tweets or at DMs. If we could line up all of the things they've done just in the last two years militarily 
and put it in a timeline because it's starting to get undeniable. I don't know how people are still denying that that something way bigger is happening right now. Maybe the distraction is the other stuff that we are looking at and focusing on. Speaking of which, uh, T-Man threatens China with big price for what they've done to the world as campaign looks to shift blame. Of course, this is CNN, just to clarify where this is coming from. United States president has again hit out at China over the CV, promising Beijing will, quote, pay a big price for what they've done to the world. It, it wasn't your fault that this happened. It was their fault. And, of course, talking about them. It says, T-Man said in a video from the White House Wednesday in which he touted his own recovery from the virus that has infected multiple top administration officials and touted a supposed cure. It says uh, that China is going to pay a big price for what they've done to this country. Well, Beijing will have been expecting this type of rhetoric following T-Man's infection. His aggressive language reminiscent of similar threats made toward uh, Ryan earlier in his presidency comes at a seriously volatile time between U.S. and China, both diplomatically and militarily. Now with Ryan, and I'm saying that different on purpose uh, for the algorithm gods, we actually took out one of their main guys. I wonder if they found out about plans or something that we would do the same to a bigger country, some you know, a country that we can't just push around. Don't know. So as far as the what is going on, it's getting much, much hotter. And a lot of folks aren't talking about it. They're just not they're not doing it. I am going to pull up Twitter. I'm going to show you kind of what people are saying as far as as all this stuff is going on. Uh, again, pretty crazy things being said. But again, it's the Internet. It's full of fake news. Take everything with a grain of salt. Let's see here. So let's go to my Twitter. If you guys fo don't follow me, go to at Marfugal. Make sure to get in it right now. If we ever get knocked down or anything like that, this is where you would find my opinions and find everything else. Uh, keep in mind that it, more of my personal uh, right-leaning opinions are on this website. I try to keep the show as uh, neutral as I possibly can. Please just don't get triggered because that's what we're trying to fight here. All right. <clears throat> So there's our current live. Now, this is this is what James put out. Now, uh, James uh, Munder, if you guys haven't checked him out, he's been on YouTube for a very long time. Um, what's cool about James is he'll cover it, and if it is wrong the next day, he'll be like, ah, that was BS, and have problems with his phones, and everybody will laugh. James is actually pretty funny when he's uh, having phone problems. But anyways, if you guys haven't checked him out, go over and check him out. It says thousands of Chinese military in Canada ready for invasion of USA. This is uh, something that he was going to be putting out. This is based on some of the information that is coming through Twitter. Uh, some say that, again, there was something here that I wanted to make sure. I, by the way, we're going to get into this here in just a minute. This is the fire of the building in South Korea, our ally, just so happens right after uh, the events of just the other day. Uh, and then, let's see here. Oh, and by the way, so this building catches fire in the uh, straight line like this. Very crazy shots. <clears throat> Same day, right before, or I'm sorry, right after. Mark Esper on the phone, the Secretary of Defense on the phone with uh, South Korea. No coincidences there. Uh, I'll show you. The, I'll show you the other video angle of that here in just a second. Uh, that's the insane tunnel fire. We'll go over that here in a second as well. But let's see. Here. Let's go past that. That was horrible. Okay, another uh, point while I'm right here. Okay, so here, here we go. 
Jacob A. Gonzalez over on Twitter says, what's going on over at this border? What is these guys doing? What is the Chinese doing? So this was the piece that people were sharing all over the place. It says, post from Heather Young. Let's see here. Try to get this the right size. And we'll provide links for this afterwards. Uh, Dex, if you can post the, the link that is on the screen right now for people to access. It says, did you know that right now there has been over 100 eyewitnesses that are reporting that there are over 75,000 of these over at the Canadian border on the other side of Washington State where I am? It says these troops are on an Indian reservation with tons of machinery and stockpiling ammunition and in pre-made buildings since January of this year. It says eyewitnesses are saying that they've seen hundreds of Chinese military trucks late at night driving down the freeway to, uh, in Canada to this particular Indian reservation for the past six months. Prime Minister of Canada signed a treaty. This is what we have covered. Uh, basically allowing Chinese troops possession of Canada land. Eyewitnesses are reporting seeing these the A group, the anti people, groups going to and fro from Washington State to Canada, this Indian reservation in Canada where the Chinese uh, troops are located. Eyewitnesses are also reporting that Chinese are supplying the anti-people in Seattle. Well, the anti-people took over parts of Seattle under the mandatory mask law, so their faces would not be seen as uh, this ascent. So what I said on this, and I wanted to be very specific, is that I highly recommend that uh, you confirm this information outside of Facebook before blindly believing it. We have at least confirmed that that treaty is freaking real and very dumb. Why would somebody do this? Why would they do this? The one thing that kind of freaks me out is the people that commented on the original post. There's a lot of people that are actually commenting saying this is true, at least as far as this uh, reservation. Some in the Fugle fam actually said, hey, I'll go. I'm in that area. If it's by where I think it is, I'll go there with the camera. I'm in Canada. We... You know, as far as you guys go in there, that's uh, up to you. If you live in Canada and you're by this, uh, again, I couldn't figure out which reservation. So, as far as that goes, pretty nuts. So we have we. I wanted to at least cover it as far as I could. I would say we're gonna wait on information, but keep your heads on a swivel and make sure that you have a contingency plan of yourself. Uh, we, we're, we're talking about uh, the government and the military are all making these contingency plans every single day now, and it is only ramping up. Even if nothing happens, I think we should have a plan anyways. And that's always been my opinion. I've always told you guys, just do a little bit here and there. And that's my big point is you can do a little bit of prep every single day or even once a week, and it will be better than doing no prep. Most people, it is so low on their priority. We all have things going on in our life. Now is the time. I hope by saying this that somebody's life is saved or somebody's life is preserved. I really do. I hope that you guys understand that. Uh, some people were not inconvenienced. At the very least, you, will be, uh, you, you won't be inconvenienced if we run out of something. At the very beginning of CV, when all of the people were being dummies and buying everything and the shelves were all empty, a lot of Fugle family members, you guys have seen uh, the comments, you guys have seen it in chat, hundreds of people said that they had stuff because we just kept repeating the same thing. It's not genius, it's just saying, hey, make sure to have prep, make sure to have prep, make sure to have prep. And they did, and they didn't have any problems when everything ran out of stock, including toilet paper. Um... So what do you guys think? I'll, I'll head over to the chat here in just a second. Cosmic Dragon, thank you so much for your support of the show. Nothing but love and happiness to the entire Fugle fam. Adam and Dex, you both are a shining light. Love the love, the love that I feel ooze from your channel. Thank you, Cosmic Dragon, and thank you, chat, for making him feel that way. Or her. I don't... Cosmic Dragon is pretty androgynous or whatever the word is for... You guys know. I don't want to say a trigger word here. But... 
again, thank you, chat. Thank you, for everybody that's in both channels that uh, literally make this the one of the best chats in the entire YouTube world. Uh, Brenda Loritz, please tell Scott he's 50, not 49, and half. Hello, Mar Dex fam. Please tell Scott he's 50, not 49 and a half. That is hilarious. Brenda Loritz, um, no, actually he's 49 and a half and three quarters. By the way, I don't think it's right of you to call him out on that. It is a half year and sorry, since I was six and three fourths, I thought that was okay. So come on, man, says blessings to all the Fugle fam. John Reagan, thank you so much. Alex Wolf, I need prayers, please. Uh, well, if everybody can pray for Alex Wolf, that would be appreciated. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I hope it. I hope that you get better. I hope the situation gets better. Alex G. Retta Zeta Rex Orbis uh, says, Great tunnel fire footage on Twitter, but that tunnel is Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel. I don't think there are any underwater tunnels in Chicago. Uh, I didn't say it was underwater. I said it was underground, but don't know if... Uh, don't know if somebody misheard. I know on Twitter I said underground. Uh, but again, maybe somebody is somebody else is out there saying that that is underwater. I didn't know. I don't think we have any underwater t tunnels here in the U.S. Uh, we've got Troy Crawford. Thank you for subscribing. Dusty Digger, thank you uh, for being the last one out. Welcome to the crazy world, Jack. Talking about my son. Thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you guys for the support. Um... And then here we go. Solar storm, huge flat flare bursts from the sun. The sun is constantly bubbling and erupting, releasing huge solar flares into space. And when it does, it releases a barrage of solar particles into the cosmos. NASA has just released a video of a massive solar flare, which if it had been released earlier, the bombardment of solar particles would have been on a collision course with Earth. It says the video from NASA's Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO, satellite shows that the sun is beginning to murmur uh, before a huge flare is released. Thankfully this time, the solar flare will miss Earth. But it had been a few days earlier, our planet would be right in the crosshairs. It says astronomy site Space Weather said if this only happened one week ago... <laughs> It said a beautifully bright <clears throat> coronal mass ejection lumbered away from the sun on October 6th. Solar flares can damage Earth's technologies and they can cause auroras. It says NOAA forecasters say that the CME will miss Earth. However, if this same explosion happened just one week ago, then the blast site was facing Earth. We would now be declaring a geomagnetic storm warning. It says, for the most part, solar flares are relatively harmless. On a normal occasion, a solar flare is responsible for auroras seen here on Earth. This is because the magnetosphere deflects the particles from the sun, leading to the blue and green lights in the northern and so southern poles. That, of course, is one of these. It says, however, on occasion, solar flares can be so powerful that they possess a threat to Earth's technology, our satellites, our planes, our vehicles, everything. These are the same thing as, as the threat that you've heard from an EMP. It says, as such, it makes it much more difficult for satellite communications to penetrate the atmosphere, damaging technologies such as mobile phones, satellite television, and GPS. A huge solar flare can cause a surge in the national grid, causing power outages. And if they say a big enough one hits, that this will knock out our entire grid. And if our entire grid is knocked out, that would be a situation where experts say up to 90% of just our population here in the U.S. would perish. And that would be from a lack of resources such as water. In fact, we are highly dependent on electricity. We are highly dependent on even the uh, internet. Even if we just lose the internet, we are going to have massive problems. You guys saw just a week ago when there was a massive hack. Uh, they believe it was a ransomware uh, attack on hospitals. Over 400 hospitals had to go back to old school pen and paper tactics because they held all of the information. They basically hijacked their entire systems. They had to move surgeries. They had to stop surgeries mid-surgery and move them because of what happened. You're talking about equipment that normally has to work with these systems. They couldn't log in. They couldn't do anything. 
And these are major hospitals that do a vital service. The day before that, uh, 911 services across the country nationwide were going down. But that supposedly wasn't related at all. All of this may have been related to solar events. That's what people think, right? But if they're not, even worse, either way, it seems like they would not tell us if something was actually going to affect us or if something actually did affect us. What do you guys think about that? Do you think it's right that they don't tell us? A lot of us would panic. You have to look and, you know, almost be Mr. Rogers about it and say, well, you have to understand that they probably have a, have a you know, they have an opinion there and maybe they're right in some ways. Maybe they are. Think about the chaos that happens when, you know, I mean, think about the chaos that happens if a court trial goes the wrong way. Think about if we lose all of our power, all of it. So I, I want to make sure that people, you know, people say, oh, this is scary or fear porn or whatever else. At one point, though, and I always say you shouldn't be afraid of it. You should look at it head on. So when it does happen, you don't freeze up. But at one point, it almost takes scaring some people to wake up and get prepared. And I bet you that there's somebody you know in your family that's completely just la, 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 la. Maybe they maybe they need a good kick in the butt. Maybe they need a good scare. Because when it does happen, we're all going to be relied on the people that aren't scared. They're all going to be relied on the preppers. They're going to know, oh, Uncle Tim's got a supply. Well, let's go over to his house. That's why most preppers, number one rule is don't talk about prepping. Because you don't want everybody knowing that you're a prepper. Either way, I hope that some of our messaging has sunk into you guys. I know that a lot of you guys have gotten prepared. We highly recommend, uh, which brings us up to this. If you guys have not worked with EMP Shield, we actually recommend this even if you do not go through us. It is an affiliate, so we get a small commission and you get a discount if you get these through us. But I highly recommend, and I've been recommending this for a year, over a year, to get it even if you don't go through us. If you have to go through another creator, there are other creators that, that affiliate with this, or if you want to go through them without us, I highly recommend it. Uh, it, again, protects against all three phases of an EMP, an E1, E2, and an E3. And it protects up to 228,000 amps of solar flare protection. Why do you use this one? Well, this is the same company that the government is using for different protections as well. DOD, DHS, and now officially the Demso team, uh, EMP Shield is on helping protect the Texas grid. They are preparing. We've shown you that. We've shown you the drills. We've shown you the eminent domain taking all the night vision goggles, uh, the, the training in the desert with no GPS with their jets. And now we're showing you everything that's going on with China, I, I just don't, I don't, I think it's a no-brainer, but that's just my opinion. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. You can get different devices that protect your solar system, your generator, your vehicle, your motorcycle, even your home. Again, all of these work in chorus and with each other and have you set up and ready to go. All right, that's again marfuglenews.com slash EMP. It highly, uh, highly recommend it even if you don't go through us again. All right, Dex, let's bring in our first caller. It looks like we have Chris, and he's calling about amassing troops in Canada, continuity of government, calling from Georgia. If you want to get uh, Chris in here, let's see here. And I am actually going to pull up. And hey, Adam, we have Chris on the line. All right, perfect. Chris, what is going on? Hey, how you doing, uh, Adam? Um, I'm call I'm just going to get right to it. I'm calling about uh, Dave Hodges uh, about a month ago. Him and a few other people like Steve Quell and uh, John, uh, John Moore uncovered a uh, continuity of government being uh, activated here in the U.S. And whenever I heard you talking about the troops, you know, it all started clicking. Uh, 
everybody's supposedly getting the CV that that surrounds Trump, his uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, and uh, military blocking off the entrances to the uh, underground bunkers there in Kingman, Arizona. And if you was to go to commonsenseshow.com and pull up the first article there, it's called The Red Team Attack. It, it Obviously, it don't say red team, but the red team attack upon the American economy is a prelude to direct military invasion. And there's a, they talk about uh, embedded um, soldiers on American soil, concealed in locations uh, such as land ports, places like that. Um, let's see. Uh, they've already uh, invaded several American towns and counties, such as Mojave County, Arizona, uh, with the Belt and Road Initiative, and uh, San Bernardino, uh, California County. But if you go scrolling down, it's talking about how they they. Um, he received an email from the American Legion of ham radio stations, and there was over 50 Chinese list listings for registration, and it don't state their location like it's supposed to. And he shows the email. It's all written in, in, in Chinese, but they, um, they translate it for it at the bottom. But you should go through this this article here and uh, read it to your uh, listeners. It, it's a good article, article or, or they could go to it. But well, the main concern is the um, continuity of govern, government that's been activated. So uh, we're, what we'll have to do is look at it because, we again, I, I haven't talked to Dave Hodges yet. He is one of the few creators that ha we have not talked to yet. Uh, you know, in fact, I think Dex has, has Dave ever tried to reach out or I know that we've sent him maybe an email or two, but, um, I think he said he did, did he say that he would work with us at some point? Yeah, Adam, I've heard that indirectly, um, but I have not heard that directly yeah, from that's, him. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, that that people told us that are close or mods said that he was he liked us or at least didn't mind us. So I don't know. I, I would lo love to have Dave Hodges on the show. Enough people suggest his stuff. There's a, there's a group of about three or four people that people send me their stuff on a daily basis. He is one mm -hmm. of them. You should also get Steve Quell on if you could. Uh, he, I also, he knows a lot. He knows as much. They got some of the same uh, people that they speak with get the uh, intel from. Yeah, we we actually have a we but have he, somebody to connect with him. That. Go ahead. There's just a um, delay. He also says in this article. Can you hear? Me? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. He also says in the article here that. Uh, the uh, red team has a uh, a military boot camp on a uh, in the, in British Columbia on one of their islands, and they're stacking up lots of troops there in British Columbia. And when they do invade, they're going to hit us from both fronts, the north and the south, because they got bases in Mexico too, along with a lot of troops and uh, military equipment, same as they do in uh, in Canada. Well, what we're going to so do is... The boot camp, had they have the, the island there of men and women. Sorry. Well, go we're gonna, what we're going to end up doing is, is we're going to link everybody so they can go to Dave Hodges, The Common Sense Show, and they can go read the article. Um, is there one more thing that you want to say before you go? We're out of time for this call, but uh, again, thank you. Um, yeah, I would suggest that uh, everybody prepare like like he says, guns, gold, hammer, whatever, food, and also get uh, ham radio communications for when things do get bad. 
And that uh, would be the only way of people communicating. We actually have uh, information on ham radio operation as well. You guys, that is a great idea and it is a solid suggestion. Uh, not everybody, there are, are also a lot of resources that show you how to get into ham radio very inexpensively because it can get expensive if it, the farther you go into it. If, if we had more people that were closer, we could actually pass on messages with lower priced, uh, more affordable ham radios. The, the longer range is where you get into the expensive stuff, but there's even people that know how to make them, everything else. Well, uh, thank you for calling in, Chris. I appreciate it. And again, I did not know about the Dave Hodges article, and I'm going to be reading it. And then again, we uh, if there's something great in there, we'll end up put, uh, putting it into our next show. Um, Again, thank you, Chris, and you have a great okay, night. Okay, at, at the bottom of his page... At, at the bottom of his show, of the uh, art of the, um, the the homepage, there's a lot of uh, audio interviews that have to do with all this as well. You, you guys might want to take a listen to that too. Okay. But you guys have a good night. I'll continue listening to the show. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. You have a great night. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out. So <clears throat> it looks like Dave wrote about this and talked about chai comms and the communications i do uh i do think that there's some stuff here that's really quite crazy uh let's see here i wanted to go to that uh what we'll do is we'll link that article on our website so you can go to marfuglenews.com and click directly to the article so you don't have to search uh let's see here it was a little confusing to me because of how it was titled but it has Chicoms, uh, C H I C O M S, in the article, and then I wasn't absolutely sure that was it. But I, again, it was because of the separation of of what the website looked like. All right, and then we have T Man calls on Biden and Obama to be charged with crimes. It says says Bill Barr will go down in history as sad, if not. That's. That's a way to put it. it. says, President DT is calling for former president, former vice president, and former secretary of state. These guys, the, the three, uh, yeah, to be charged with crimes and said his attorney general, Bill Barr, will go down in history as sad if he fails to bring charges. In an interview with Fox Business Thursday, the president railed about 1,000 pages of documents declassified by the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, pertaining to his probe on the origins of the uh, investigation into Russia, the whole collusion. It says the declassified documents were previously rejected by uh, both parties on the Senate Intelligence Committee with the D side bashing the material as Russian disinformation. DNI Ratcliffe said that the unverified documents show that Hillary personally tried to stir up a scandal against T-Man uh, by trying him to Putin and the Russians hacking of the DNC, says, and that Obama was aware of her actions. So by now there is actually enough evidence. It doesn't, I don't think even if, I've talked to people that are far left and they even disagree with the dishonesty in this because I think it doesn't matter what party you're in. If you are a good person that is far left or far right, you should uh, have a moral compass. I mean, there's wrong and there's right. And there are some really good people that are completely love these people and are, are super disappointed in what they did. It, frankly, I mean... If it's a crime, it's a crime. But will they ever serve time or get hit with it? Probably not. That's just my opinion. I think most people agree with me, but uh, we'll see. You know, a lot of the the Q crowd think that a lot of everybody's going to get arrested. And I honestly hope so. It says, T-Man in the interview called on his attorney general to indict every presidential nominee from his opposing political party since 2008 says, unless Bill Barr indicts these people for crimes, the greatest political crime in history of our country, then we're going to get little satisfaction, T-Man said. He added that, quote, that includes Biden Obama. Pretty crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. This is our president saying this. 
a president calling for a former president to be charged with a crime and arrested. This is 2020, people. Even like, I mean, 20 years ago, this would have been so insane to hear about. This would have been like tabloid stuff that was totally made up. Now it's all real. This is the real world now. And it's only getting worse. 13 charged in plots against the Michigan governor, uh, police say. Agents foiled a stunning plot to kidnap Michigan Democratic uh, Gretchen Whitmer, authorities said Thursday in announcing charges in an alleged scheme that involved months of planning and even rehearsals to snatch her from her vacation home. Six men were charged in federal court with conspiring to kidnap this governor in reaction to what they viewed as her uncontrolled power, according to a federal complaint. Separately, uh, seven others were charged in state court under Michigan's anti-T laws, and I'll zoom in on that for you, under the anti-T laws for allegedly targeting police and seeking a civil conflict. So if this if this was really going to happen or was whatever does anybody else think that this is an actual possibility (laughs) because it it sure seems like there are people that honestly want this It says, all of us in Michigan can disagree about politics, but those disagreements should never, ever amount to violence. Violence has been prevented today, Detroit U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider told reporters. Now, I saw on Twitter, a lot of people on Twitter was, were debating that, or or saying that this was not, that this was some sort of ploy or, or made up to, to make division. I don't know. I didn't know enough about it. In fact, this was the the first I heard of it today. So I didn't know that, um, I, I didn't, you know, I, it, it's not my, uh, not my expertise. Dex, can I ask you, what, what do you think about this? Do you think that this was meant to cause division or am I totally off on that? You're, you're totally on, on that. And, and I gotta, I gotta say, like, when I look at this and I look at what you just talked about with, uh, with T-Man and I think about like if somebody if the people in control or in power were trying to get us to that highlighted word that civil conflict right what would they be doing like we've seen all the things we've talked about it in the past we've said oh it looks like it's going to be it's you know that could be coming we're getting tension we're getting tension now we got it in the mainstream papers now we have a president calling the opposition for indicting for indictments and and we've got people plotting overthrows right on both sides all of this is just sort of like the pot boiling and we're the frogs and we're just sitting in that water and it's just getting hotter and hotter and how do they get us to the point where we're ready or they think that we're ready for this to to happen well i mean and and it really seems like this is something that could be a reality some believe a probability I think I I don't know which which way this is going to go to be honest but I know it's not heading in a great direction and that's not to be a pessimist that's not to be a downer or a dooms doomsday nay or say or whatever it's it's kind of the facts of life now I've got kids to bring up so I'm preparing for that just so I can protect my kids in the event it does so what do you guys think about this? Do you think that this is something that was a faked, faked, planned, planned? Or what do you guys think? This is a this is kind of interesting. It says, a mystery high-speed object seen tumbling past the ISS as spacecraft disembarks. It says, strange footage claiming to capture a UFO hurtling past the ISS at great speed has sparked a conspiracy frenzy. It says the baffling clip was shared to YouTube by conspiracy. I hate how they do this. I hate how they call him that. Uh, he's, he, his stuff isn't even, I don't even think he does this word. He actually backs his stuff up more than most. Uh, in fact, he usually has pictures and videos that show what he's showing. 
I just get so annoyed by, well, look, it's Daily Star. Why why do you do that? Daily Star, if you ever watch my show, why do you have to call it that? Mr. MBB333 on October 6th and has already seen more than 22,000 times. It shows a small white light speeding behind the station as the spacecraft starts to disembark. It looks like it's white, and as we zoom in, it appears to be tumbling, the uploader says. He then does zoom in, which it seems to show the object wobbling or rotating. It says, what was that thing, he asked. In the past few months, we've been seeing a lot of things. Is that weird or what? It says, you can see a tumbling or changing shape. Mr. MBB333 then alters the video into a negative format, which seems to show even clearer that the shape is rotating. That is moving at a very high rate of speed and quite far away from the International Space Station. I don't know what that was. This makes about the third or fourth object that we've seen above planet Earth via the International Space Station. So this is kind of the object that they're seeing and Again, it says, there are some incredible things going on above Earth, which at least the origins are as of yet unknown. As with all videos of supposed UFOs, the sighting sparked a wave of comments with viewers offering suggestions of what the object could be. It says, there are a lot of aliens in the orbit around Earth. They have been here for a long time, one believer wrote. Another said it was something very small tumbling in front of the space station. Wow, that was damn good video of the UFO flying by the ISS, a third added. Just think, the ISS travels at 27,000 miles per hour, and that object was faster. Uh, if you guys have not checked out Mr. MBB333, you guys most definitely should. Uh, again, the video of it is amazing. I don't want to show his video because uh, I respect him as a creator. And I'm not going to take his stuff without permission. Uh, if you guys do know, or if you talk to him on a daily basis, let him know that I'm a fan. And I would love to have him on sometime or chat with him. Uh, the more creators that we know here, the more clips that we can use and actually show you guys and kind of bounce off. It helps them. It helps us. So make sure to go say hi to Mr. MB333. He is somebody that is hard to get a hold of. He is a busy man. He's uh, as busy as I am, so I don't blame him. All right, uh, make sure to go over and watch that video. We've linked it on our website. You can actually do it on a second device right now if you have one handy. Uh, let's see here. And we'll get back into that here in a second. I think we actually can... Hold on. We're going to try to show a better... I'm going to actually find something here while I'm there. If you guys, meanwhile, if you guys want to head over to NordVPN and support us in any way, you guys should all be protected by virtual private network. You can go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. All you have to do is turn it on and turn it off. It protects you against data logging. All right, we're going to get into our next phone call. I'm going to go over to DLive. Uh, then we're going to be talking about the experts and Delta. Delta, the, of course, now category, uh, category four storm. I think it has actually... Yeah, it's continued to actually be a c category four. It has not dropped yet. So let me open this up here. It looks like up next we have Josh, who's a first-time caller, and he has uh, he has some email about suspected events during the time where we vote. Josh, you're live on Marfugal News. Hey, Adam, how are you? Good. So you have emails and texts regarding the uh, uh, voting time. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to keep this short and sweet so you can get back to your, to your news. Um, I shared this actually on my podcast, but um, back on – my dad's a preacher. He's an evangelist, so my dad knows a lot of people, and he knows a lot of people who know a lot of people. And um, he got a text back. Eight eight, and I'm a, I'm a, I got two things I want to read, and I'll be done. But on eight eight, he got a text from a pastor friend of his by the name of Brother Ter Daryl Turner, and this is what the text message said: "Well, the civil conflict we believe was coming is expected by our government. This was a, from a pastor friend of mine out west. Now Daryl Turner has a friend out west that's a pastor. 
the friend out west has a gunsmith by the name of Bob. And Bob, his gunsmith, has a family member who works in the Homeland Security. And Bob told him that the home, his relative in Homeland Security told him that they are receiving two to three train car loads a week of two to three and nine millimeter ammo. And he asked why, because nobody can get it. If you notice, you can't, nobody can hardly find this information, the, these, this, uh, products online, um, nine millimeter ammo and two, two, three. And he said they are preparing for the outbreak of internal conflict in November. Bob asked if T man wins. The Homeland Security relative replied, they said it won't matter who wins. They're expecting an uprising either way. And that, that got my, got my, uh, my attention there. But the email that I'm getting ready to read for you guys is really what got my attention. This is an email that my dad received from a man by the name of Tim Bisner Sr. And this is what the email says, Adam. He says, my friends, I'm not an alarmist. I'm not. But I heard something tonight that scared the pants off me. Many of you know me in person and not just on Facebook. And you know that I have many contacts all through government that I've developed over decades of service. I'm nothing special, but I do have these avenues. I was told today that on or soon after the event in November, a true revolt and uprising would take place, and it's been organized now. This came from someone who is in government who told me he's extremely concerned. I cannot tell you who told me this. I can only tell you I'm taking heed. This man never shares this information freely, ever. He said to me the following, in the next two months, an uprising is coming, and the government is preparing for nationwide martial law. He said to immediately stock up on goods needed to survive and support life for your family, food, water, paper goods, defensive weapons, ammo, and amazingly, he emphasized having on hand spare fuel and a generator. He is worried for his family again with his position. That statement shocked me. He told me the anarchist groups that are growing in this nation daily will begin much will begin with much larger and broader protests than they are having right now, and they will move swiftly into suburbia. They will have the left hierarchy support. They will employ shock in all tactics. They will employ lockdowns that are mandatory to minimize organized public resistance. He told me that this is not hyperbole. They have people on the inside verifying the planning. This information is quietly going to law enforcement agencies nationwide. Bounties are on law enforcement heads especially. They are well funded. If T-Man wins, the left will and is actively planning to lash out at law enforcement nationwide and against the civilian population for putting T-Man back in office. They will seek the death of innocence such as the two deputies in California and children, as payback for their loss of power. T-Man will and is preparing to, to declare martial law nationwide. If Biden wins, the left will and is actively planning to unleash fury on the nation and citizenry as payback for the past four years of T-Man. Biden and Harris will sit back and let this happen. Biden will openly advocate for the further defunding of the majority of police nationwide, and Harris will rule by, rule by proxy. Again, you know I have never been an alarmist, but the source of this, this information and his place in government is unimpeachable. Again, I was shocked by the source of the info, and it is a person I trust implicitly. He told me that the three-letter three letter word for the, that group that's going on and related fringe groups and, and m must and will be destroyed by force and that plans are being made to do this and restore law and order. But until all this comes to pass, it's going to get bad even in the rural areas so the left ha can have maximum shock and all effect and drive fear into the nation to sub submit to BLM and the left, uh, that order word phrase. So he said to lay it block plainly, he is talking of a true civil conflict brewing and they are preparing for it at the highest levels i am taking what i heard tonight seriously and we are preparing i implore you to do as well he said I, the last thing he said was i believe they're using this left versus right team man versus the blank um blank i don't want to say that the ds narrative as a hegelian dialect to a problem reaction solution and our occupied government is kind of like a good cop bad cop I have also confirmed from other online sources that they believe this martial law declaration to be accurate, one of which is a medic in the Army in a combat support hospital that claims they are deploying on American soil to distribute distribute these shots. The only source, the other source that he has heard of the same rumors of the same plot. And my dad spoke to one of his friends down in Georgia who is a pastor. He then asked one of his friends who pastors a real big church in Florida, and he's got many friends in government. And he said he, he asked him the question. He said, read this email. He asked his friends that's in government. He said, everything in that email is true. 
Now, I can't sit here and say that it's true. I, I, as prior law enforcement, I see things on the horizon. All I can say is, you know, everybody be prepared. You know, you rather have the things that you need and not have to use it uh, than need it and not have it. That's that's all I, I, I got to say about that one. Prepare, <clears throat> prepare for the worst and expect the best. Again, nothing in this show. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Again, is the the views of, of our show. I've got just got to say that to keep myself safe. Um, but I I will I was listening right. the entire time, and I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there that were listening very intently. Um, thank you so much for calling in, Josh. And we will be linking that. We'll, we might even clip that out and put it uh, on our Twitter separately as well. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Yes, sir. I appreciate uh, you letting us know. There is one part of that, though, thank that you, really you kind of freaks time. me out. Now, the, again, this was – so the second part, the second person that you got an email from, they're, are, are they the yes, evangel of evangelicist? The, the, there was a part that um, you said no, they're, they're, they're matched up. Um, the the first guy was an evangelist. Um, he's a pastor of a church, and Who the, is the guy. Second? I don't know this. This the, all I know his name to be Tim Besner Senior. Um, that's the only one, the only name I know it by. But it's somebody that my dad knows. Okay, you well, you didn't even have to go that far. Yeah, yeah. Some something there rang a bell. So thank you so much. Uh, can you? Um, thank you. Can I call you off air? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Yes, sir. Uh, you can. Be safe, be prepared, and marf out. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Okay. Let's let's keep moving forward here. As Great call. Thank you, uh, Josh. Again, appreciate it. Let's see here. I and I okay. So either way that the the vote goes, I I think it's it's not hard to see it. It could be very very bad. I don't think that it's even a uh, one party or the other thinks it's going to be bad. I I believe that most people in the United States believe it's going to be bad. And for whatever reason, I think that this is possibly going to care over worldwide because I know that uh, a lot of you are in Europe or Australia. You don't you know oh, who cares who wins. It will affect the entire world who wins because there's most likely plans in place for the entire world. U.S. is the the top of, of this, this chain of command. And they might not even be the most powerful. Who knows? Some The ruler in Australia might be more powerful than us and really secretly call the shots, but they make the U.S. look like it's, it's the top of the top. Uh, there might be a family in Europe that is the top dog really, you know, playing the puppet strings. But again, I think we should all get our stuff together. Um, as soon as possible, just in case it's, it's again, expect the best, expect the worst, wait, expect the best, prepare for the worst. All right. And then, uh, you know what? While we're at it, uh, let, got to go over to D Live. Thank you guys for being so patient over there. Um, tons and tons of people uh, just joined, just followed. Haben, Haben Ding, thank you so much for following. Uh, new followers tonight, thank you so much. Redhead with Dreads, thank you for the diamond there. I appreciate that. Irish Molly, I appreciate that as well. Dutch Arm, JoJo Walker Nations 13, thank you for joining me. Uh, for some reason, I, I think I saw you on Twitter today. You were responding to, I think, Joker. Uh, Unicorn Forest, Renegade Petey, the truth is out there. Uh, Luna Soul, uh, Dutch Arm, KCH3, Habending again. Thank you, High Velocity. Dixie Doe, I appreciate your support tonight. Let's see here. We've got um, Dusty Digger again. Thank you so much. Josh Speed, thank you for following. As always, if you subscribe during the show, you will get a shout out. I will shout you out and I will find you. Backwoods Ingenuity, thank you so much. Ham, kind of pricey, license, long range, more channels, CB, cheaper, no license, less range. 
Few channels walkie-talkie, cheapest, no license, short range. Uh, Backwoods Ingenuity, thank you for putting... I like how you did that. Uh, the three different options there. Cosmic Options, uh, again, or Cosmic Dragon, thank you again for your support here. Let's see here. I did want to pop open. Let's see here. Just want to make sure I can see everything here. A lot of stuff just closed down. Let's see here. Okay. Um, so far, thank you, Gen W two thousand twelve. You are the top. You are the uh, the top contributor tonight, which I believe that's your first time on that board. Thank you so much. Zippy Moons, that is not your first time. You've been on there many times. Uh, Mama Rock, so a lot of new names on here. And then Texas Rob, thank you for your support today. Uh, Jojo Walker Nations 13, thank you so much. Uh, and then, of course, we have... Uh, Mersa one as number one this month. Gone Girl Triple Seven. Thank you for being uh, number two. Uh, and again, Gone Girl, if you're uh, sleeping or whatever, I hope you're watching the replay. I appreciate you. Uh, Susan Donahue and Veteran Steve, thank you guys. Uh, again, Grace for you too. Apple Blossom Three. Thank you all uh, again. And then Amy R. We uh, all miss you here. Again, remember, you don't ever have to do anything when you come in. Uh, Gone Girl, End Times, Tower Bear, and Kelly2334. Uh, some of our regulars. So thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, and more thank yous. All right, let's get back into it. I'm going to pull up this Delta information. Uh, again, Delta has obviously scared a lot of people because they thought it was going to get worse. Hopefully... Uh, that is not going to be the case. It says Hurricane Delta gaining strength as it bears down on the U.S. Gulf Coast is the latest and nastiest in a recent flurry of rapidly intensifying Atlantic hurricanes that scientists largely blame on global heating. I'll just say that because that other word is is. A uh, huge filter word. Earlier, before hitting Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula and temporarily losing uh, strength, Delta set a record for going from 35 miles per hour, unnamed tropical depression, to a monstrous 140 miles per hour. Category 4 uh, storm in just 36 hours. What's funny is it actually got up to that in half the time, in 15 hours. Beating a mark set in 2000, according to University of Colorado weather uh, data scientist Sam Lillo. We've certainly been seeing a lot of that in the last few years, said National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration climate and hurricane scientist Kim Cossine. It says it's more likely that the storm rapidly intensify now than it did in the 1980s. A lot of that has to do with human-caused climate. So a lot of people get triggered by that because they say, no, it's not human-caused, this and that. Whatever it is, I do believe that the planet is changing, whether it's forced or artificial or by us. Something's going on, and who knows? Maybe it's just to take people out. I don't know. It says, over the past couple decades, meteorologists have increasingly worried about storms that just blow up from nothing to a whopper, just like Delta. They created an official threshold for this dangerous rapid intensification, a storm gaining 35 miles per hour in wind speed in just 24 hours. This actually gained more than that. It says Delta is the sixth storm this year and the second in a week to reach the threshold. And it reached it pretty fast. Uh, it actually jumped 65 miles per hour in one day, which is absolutely nuts. This thing very well, you know, I, I hear people on Twitter saying that it's, uh, you know, H-A-A-R-P, all this kind of stuff. I don't know, but I, I am praying for the people that are in the path of it. Me living in Washington most of my life, we've never seen a hurricane. I couldn't um, possibly imagine. I'm not going to pretend to know what it's like to live where you guys live. Uh, again, that's it's extremely scary. I know that much, and I am praying for you guys. And then we have up to 1,500 birds flew into some of Philly's tallest skyscrapers one day last week. The slaughter shook bird watchers. Okay, this is like biblical. What the hell? But you know what it really is? I believe, I think this is the pole 
poll stuff going on. This is the sh- the the polls screwing up their navigation. It says Stephen Majewski dropped to a knee on the center city sidewalk Wednesday morning and gently scooped up a yellow billed cuckoo that had smashed into a skyscraper and died on its way to Central America or the West Indies. It says this probably happened yesterday, said Majewski, a 71 year old retired social worker and volunteer for the Audubon, Pennsylvania. He labeled a plastic bag with the time, date and location tucked the slim migrator into it and continued his rounds. Masiuski gets emotional when he speaks about all the birds he finds, but nothing he says prepared him for what happened on Friday. So many birds were falling out of the sky, we didn't know what was going on, he said. Choking up, it was a really catastrophic event. The last time like something happened like this was in 1948. It says on Friday, an estimated 1,000 to 1,500 birds flew into buildings in a three and a half block radius of Center City overnight and into early morning during the Masioski called a perfect storm of avian calamity. That could mean tens of thousands more likely perished elsewhere in the city, he estimated. He collected over 400 birds between 5 and 8 a.m. just in three hours. In the radius, he regularly covers roughly spanning 17th to 19th streets between Market Street and JFK Boulevard. An astonishing number, according to the Pennsylvania Audubon official. It says, there were so many I was picking up five at a time. One guy from building maintenance dumped 75 living and dead birds in front of me as if it were a collection. Maziuski logs birds, noting its flight path, time, and location of impact. There were so many birds, I ran out of supplies. These are all different kinds. This is out of a uh, apocalypse movie. And they always have some sort of excuse why this is happening over the last five years. It says, we almost collected 100 birds on one small roof, he said of Friday's Hall. In the five days since, things returned to normal and Masioski has collected no more than 20 birds a morning. First off, I didn't know, are there people that collect this many dead birds every day? Is this why we don't see that many dead birds? I've seen dead birds in my life, but I've never seen that much. Is this a regular thing downtown? I've never actually seen that many. And I live in a city with tons of skyscrapers. I guess that's just, that's crazy to me. Um, I have seen birds fly into things, but usually it's because they're clear, not because they're a huge skyscraper right in front of them. I understand that most of this, or some of this, was at night. It said some of it. It says a sudden plunge in temperatures could have prompted the birds to start their flight in mass. So, start, you know, they all went and thought it was the right right time. I, I don't know how that would have them hit the buildings, though. Doesn't make sense. I guess there's probably some sort of explanation or excuse for it. it. says, birds are crashing into New York City buildings. Record numbers are being rescued. When Genevieve brought an injured pigeon to Manhattan's Wild Bird Fund Wild Hife Rehabilitation Center last Saturday, she was surprised to find a line outside. A couple ahead of me had a bird in their sweatshirt. Other people had birds in Amazon boxes. Mine was in a takeout bag that I had grabbed from a restaurant. She says one passerby asked if people were waiting in line for an ice cream shop. You had found the injured pigeon lying on the sidewalk in her lower east side neighborhood and knew that the bird needed help. I have a particular fondness for pigeons. It breaks my heart when I see people treating them like vermin. She, she said that she lined a paper bag with spare diaper that she had packed for her two-year-old, hopped in a lift, and headed north to the Wild Bird Fund of the Upper West Side. She said it's a tiny, uh, a tiny non-profit operation tasking with serving all of New York City. It's kind of like a bird emergency room. You says our little ambulances are basically paper shopping bags and shoe boxes. 
Everyone in line bonded over their tiny charges. We started immediately sharing. Where did your bird come from? Where did your bird come from? Do you want to see my bird? She didn't know that at the time that New York was in the midst of a wave of bird collisions. Between Friday, October 2nd and Saturday, October 3rd, the Wild Bird Fund took in a record of 220 injured birds, three quarters of which were migratory songbirds, including uh, northern perulas, common yellow throats, and many warbler species. So do you, do you guys see the pattern here? Multiple spots, they were off in their migratory patterns. The poles are shifting. That's my opinion. Fact is that they are uh, dying, and a lot of them. Pretty crazy. Is it normal, though? I'd like to hear your opinion on it. If you guys don't want to be tracked and traced, please support us in this way. You guys can get an EDEC bag. Once you put your phone in it, your phone is off-grid. There's no chance you're going to get a geofence warrant or even be traced uh, somewhere you don't want to be traced. Once you put your laptop or your device in these bags, it is off-grid. You can even get a utility bag. That's their other version. Uh, this one is the off-grid. The utility bag has a window, so you can actually still access your phone uh, while blocking the signals going in and out. That is marfuglenews.com slash edec, savings code marfugal. All right, we're going to get our, our call here going, uh, but I, first, before you pull them in, I'm actually going to go over to uh, DLive here. Let's see. Thank you, guys. Uh, Jan B. Cox, pray up, peeps. Remember, in the end, we win regardless. Uh, not sure what to believe. Great show, Marf, Dex, and Marfia. That was that was their uh, their. Screen name, not sure what to believe. Thank you so much for your support tonight. Texas Rob 49 says, Welcome, baby Jack. How's Jack and Mama Marf? Uh, they are good. Uh, Mama Marf has uh, actually gotten a little sick, and then baby Jack actually has a, a rash on his chin because he's been scratching at it. So we had to put some stuff on it. Uh, Five of Cups, Prosperity 2012, and then we've got Ed G. Whalen. Uh, we've got The Truth Is Out There, J. Millie RN, thank you so much. Bad Billy Buck, Duckets, thank you. Geisy, thank you for being here. Uh, Debsy, I appreciate you so much, thank you. Uh, Mary XX, High Velocity, Shy the Coffee, Cutthroat Mom. Uh, Laura Griffith, everybody's over there right now, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Zippy Moons. Thank you for the diamond. I appreciate that. End Times. I appreciate that. Uh, End Times, you're here. You actually are here. I just called you out earlier. Aeon, thank you for following. Uh, looks like Eon Flux. What is going on? All for him, Shelly73. And it looks like Blue Sky 55 is here. Uh, Gloria White, thank you, says they're going to evoke the 25 Amendment mint because t is aggression on steroids big trouble last ditch effort to dump t 113 no way out prepare gloria white um i've heard a lot about that amendment this week man lots of talk about it all right we're gonna get our next caller in in fact we have a uh, global impact remember the generators Shipping with military and pandemic and exercises is what they want to talk about. Calling from New York. Global Impact, are you there? It looks like he is in the process of coming in uh, and talking about CB cheaper. Let's see here. And Adam, Global Impact, you are now live. What's up, Adam? Google fam. What's going on? So, what's your topic tonight? What's going on? All right. So, I don't know. I guess I woke up the other morning and just was watching some Mark Google news. And I had just thought about the last few years how crazy everything has been from uh, I remember driving down the road and seeing a convoy of you know, hundreds of military vehicles with generators on the back of them. Um, and then in that same year, they did the, what the clade X exercise and all the, the 
planned cold exercise, I guess, that they did around the country, um, or in several states anyway. And then you lead it up to to where we are today with the CV and these groups that are trying to change our country. Um, it is almost seems like it was kind of planned, you know, like they kind of tried to prepare us, you know, uh, as far as prepping wise and, you know, loading up on ammunition and bang bangs, um, you know, to be able to protect ourselves for, from whatever's coming from other countries, possibly from the sky. Um, the creation of SpaceX, um, the fact that uh, the other countries are kind of almost over-weaponizing their games nowadays, I guess. Well, and just Um, everything that's happening, really. Keep going. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I guess I just feel like they've been really kind of trying to foreshadow and give us clues into what to prepare for. Um, I really do believe that it's very possible that something may be coming to our soil and that the only way to get all of us to get together is you divide us first. You make us hate each other. You load us up with arms. And then what happens, what happened after the last major uh, cold? back in, what was it, 1918, or, you know, what, what happened right after that? Is uh, that where we're going today? WW, you know, it's just, WW1, you mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, we're now we're trying to bring manufacturing back to America. Um, the manufacturing boom, that's when... You know, it kind of started right before, you know, the WW1. And WW2, um, actually. If you, I mean, literally. And the politiz- politi- yeah, I mean, politi- we're, we're, politicalization yeah. of the flag. That happened in the civil conflict. It happened in WW1, in WW2. Uh, I don't think people realize that. But it, we're basically seeing history repeat itself. 100%. But that's not enough to, to prove to exactly. most people. That's why we've pointed out all of these other things. They're drilling for it. They're doing continuity of government. Exactly. And it, everything. It, exactly. And then all these exercises the last few years, I mean, it, it, it's really, it, everything is blown up. And, and let me just run this one past you. Um, now that we're going into a solar maximum, what would happen if we were attacked during a solar maximum with a EMP creating uh, weapon. It wouldn't be good. That's for sure. It wouldn't be good, but it, it, it wouldn't need to be very big either. You know, they, and on top of that, who's going to point fingers when, you know, we're, everybody's reporting that, okay, we're going into the solar maximum. There's going to be a CME, uh, you know, coming. Could that be a predicted thing for something else? You know, uh, I, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm just really confused. I'm just trying to explore some ideas. Um, I, don't, I don't think you're that confused. I think, think. I think well, you're at the stage that pretty much everybody else is and you're starting to put all of it together and say, how can you deny that it is this obvious? When you put all, and it's not like we're putting crazy pieces yeah, I, in, like we're not doing, um, it's not like we're saying, oh, this, you know, this number is the same number backwards and forwards, so it must be it. Uh, and I'm not saying that's crazy either, but I'm saying this isn't even like questionable. This is like straight up facts. Look at the, the conflict that's going back and forth, the China ship and the U.S. ship lighting fire them declaring that space is, is weaponized, them declaring, you know, DEW's real. Look at the fires. Look at the buildings with fruit ninjas between them. Look at the explosions, unexplained. And then, oh, by the way, we have hypersonic missiles that are eight times the speed of sound that you probably won't see if it did hit something from the sky. It's I, I, I think there's a lot going on. I, I think you're right. right, though. I know I get it. 
No, it, it really is. And then, and, and then one more. I've also, I made a comment a while ago to you. Um, the comment was uh, 6.2 billion people in 2008, uh, 7.8 billion people in 2019. Um, you know, max population. Uh, you ask Google, you ask your phone, ask Siri, what is the maximum population of Earth? And the number is going to surprise you. And the, and the number that the uh, that we've increased in the last 12 years since I graduated high school is astronomical. And it's coming faster than it's going to be in the next 12 years. So I just have that feeling. And this is right down the line of everything is going to play out. The P, the W, the everything. It's going to happen. It is already here. All I'm saying is everybody should just be prepped. Um, you know, at least help your family survive. It's for the children. I don't know what kind of world we're going to be leaving our children you know and they're the ones that are going to be living it this is yeah this answer is not exactly what i thought it was going to be it says seven billion people uh what is our current population <laughs> it, 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 7.87 i think is our current is our current number the the numbers are a little I think old i think um but then they, then max, I don't know. I asked my phone, it says in between nine to 10 billion for max. Yeah. It says some, some say that, so we're going to be there in no time. So even look at the last lifetime. So say, no what year did you graduate high school? Let's just do this real quick. Uh, what, what year did you, gra you said 2000. Since 2000. Okay. So in 2000, it was 6.1 billion. Uh, just in the last 20 years, it has gone up 1.5 billion people. Okay, since 1990, just an extra 10, 5 billion, 2.5. Wait a second. So it went up a billion from there, and then 1.5 billion, okay, 1980 to 1990. It only went up 0.7 or 0 0.6 billion from 1970 to 1980. about a billion so it's actually going up and up and up three wow this is incredible it, 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 yeah it's gonna keep... well on, on top of that you look at this what, what's going to happen after what is just happening right now everybody is was stuck at home or is stuck at home still people get bored and i'm telling you right now we're going to have another baby boom well, think about it. If you were born in 1960, a lot of my audience is born in from 60 to 80, right? Or actually, even 1950 to 1980. Right. So a lot of my audience was on the earth when there was only 3 billion people. And now we are at the point where we're at almost 8 billion people. That was in 2018. Let's see. Hold on. I got to... Crazy. We don't know, right? We don't know. I that maybe that's why they're doing the seven point eight. We're almost at eight billion people. It, wow. Yeah. Well, thank it you. makes you think, and that exactly. time is short. The time isn't going to be very long for us to prepare. Well, thank you for calling in. Global Impact, what a perfect screen name for that. Uh, thank you so much for calling in about that, uh, calling in from New York. I hope you have a great night, and don't be a stranger, okay? You too. All right, good night. Hey, I know you guys too. Love you guys. All right, bye-bye. By the way, I was just I was just thinking, like, I was just looking through the chat. There's some people that have been here for a really long time, able-bodied. I don't. I can't even remember the last time you missed a show. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, but there were some other names that have seriously been here for a long time, and I really do appreciate you. I actually do know, I notice when I when people don't show up. I know that some people are here so often that I know they can't be at every show. But, you know, of course, I mean, even regular people notice when you're not there. Occam's Razor, you've been here for a long time. Thank you. By the way, these are not, uh, these are not uh, donators. These are people that I 
have been around for three years and almost in every show. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, people get mad when I, I shout out donations, but you guys have to realize we are trying to grow and we are trying to build this out. So we do appreciate donations. They're not required. And I do want to make a point of it to shout out people that are just here that, that share that, that, uh, call out our, our names that put pamphlets up. I see, I just saw a Marfugal news sticker on a, a poll here. Somebody local put up stickers all over this poll. I was blown away by that. Uh, Holly Buskirk, you are another one. Thank you so much for spreading the word and being here every night. Jstone782, my wonderful mod. Whitetail7 has been here a long time. Uh, of course, I basically to be a mod, you have to be here a super long time. Uh, Michael Sotore, thank you. Some of the longest people that have been here have opposite views of me too, which is awesome. Clintstones world. What's going on? It's nice to have says who needs a hug free hugs. Uh, the, some of the people that disagree with me most are still here after three years because they get that the, we can disagree and be friends. That should be what it should be. Like we should have, we shouldn't have the same opinions for gosh sakes. Melissa Lynn, thank you for being here. Kevin Brock, I see tons of new names. Thank you guys for, I, I really do. I genuinely appreciate you guys being here. I, I genuinely appreciate you sharing my stuff. Um, if you find value in this show, if you're watching the replay or anything else, if you can give it a like, that's a very much appreciated. But again, sometimes that's too much. I even have people that used to be haters. And of course, after you know, finding out what they heard was wrong or, or dumb or whatever. Uh, they ended up there now here every night. So I, I appreciate you guys so much. Uh, what's going on? Amazing drop. You've been here for a long time. Brandy a H CJ blaze. Of course, T lock tons and tons of people. Lisa Jones, Rob Jarvis. I love you guys. Thank you. Sunlight Sucker says, did you catch Edge of Wonders interview CIA versus NSA? It was mind-blowing. Definitely convinced me that T-Man is in control and for the good. Y'all should watch it. I will definitely check it out. Who knows? We could have Ben and Rob on and, and have them talk about it. Uh, that is something that we have been waiting to do and we need to get them on. Of course, I've been on their show, but they have not come on, on our show yet. All right, let's get Julie on. First time caller, prepping and a dream about EMP. That's creepy. Uh, Julie, you can come in when you want. And then over on D Live, April Osborne, much love to you, Mrs. Marv, baby Jack, and fam. Hello? Hi, Julie, you are live on Marfugal News. What Hello? is going on? Hi, thank you. Listen, I, I've been listening for more than a year, and I just want to tell you that you seem like such a kind person. I so appreciate your kind heart. Well, thank you, Julie. There's a bit of a delay, so I'm just going to let you talk, and, and you've got the mic tonight, okay? Nice meeting you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to try to go fast. I'm a prepper. I started because about... Like about 10 years ago, or 11 years ago, I had an extremely vivid dream. And in this dream, it started in a, a, a shop in my town where I, I, I go shopping. And I had come out and everything was pitch black. And I went to my car and it wouldn't start. And no, no cars were going. So I went, I slept in the store, knowing that in the morning I would have to get out and walk home. So when I came out of the store in the morning, I noticed people coming from the surrounding neighborhoods to basically steal, but I was not afraid of the crowd because they weren't an angry mob, but they knew they needed to get supplies. And the only thing, only vehicle I saw running was an old kind of what I would call a motorbike or trail bike. So my understanding in a dream was it was an EMP that had been caused by a CME. I didn't know what an EMP was or a CME. So, but 
I felt, I mean, this dream was so vivid. So I went searching to find out what that meant. And I, I believe I was led to another dream. And this dream, this guy's dreams happened about 24 hours before the start of my dream. And in his dream, he said he, there was this huge, he just called it a UFO in the sky. And the whole world was fixed on this thing. Trying to figure out what it was all over the news. But he said, he said, but when you see that thing, you get ready. Because he said somewhere between two hours and 24 hours after that thing is seen in the sky, a comet hits the back of the sun. And that's what causes the CME. Okay. So I, I felt like this was a hint that I need to start prepping. I didn't know what to do. Started from zero. Just wanted to share some thoughts with you that I've learned. First thing is, please think about this. What if this were to happen when you are out in your car? I knew that it would take me about two days to walk home from where I had, where I was in my dream. So what I, I just, I keep a backpack in my car that has like a life straw. It's got a poncho in it. It's got just a basic medical kit. Just, and, and I keep comfortable shoes in my car. And um, that's something for people to think about. Think about what you would do if you were in your car and this happened, you know, if you had to walk home. Another thing, even if you had this EMP show on your car, if you're somewhere traffic, you may not be able to move, even though you know, your car might move. But if everybody else's car doesn't move, you may be stuck. And if you're not stuck, everybody wants your car now. So you probably have to defend your, your car. And then... I just want to share some other, other ideas I've learned. And one thing is about water, the city water supply. And I've listened to a lot of people, and there's, there's differences of opinion because not every city's water is the same. But a suggestion I've heard that I really think is great is if this EMP were to hit, go turn off your water supply. The reason is because some water will fairly quickly become unreliable. Un, 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 you won't be able to count on it to be safe to drink. So if you immediately shut off your valve, at least you know the water that's already in your house is okay. And by the way, your water heater is filled with clean water. Remember that. And then another thing that I'm um, thinking about, okay, sanitation um, products have two. You can get like a Home Depot bucket, and you can buy this like toilet lid just to put on top of that. Have at least two so you can have solids and liquids in different containers because you, you have to deal with those waste in a different way. And then um, also, if, if, I, if the gentleman would excuse me for just a minute to say something to the ladies, ladies, you can have washable feminine hygiene products. I've made hundreds of these things to send to the women of Nepal for their um, san sanitation packages. Um, and so these things are easy to make or they're easy to buy, and um, they're really great to have on hand. And in something like this, um, if your power is down for months, it would be so good to have these um, washable sanitation project prop, um, properties, these little, gosh, they little snap-on things. But you can find it on the Internet, though. And um, I learned what I did. Is I, I, I got ducks. I got rabbits. I planted fruit trees. I did, became a better gardener. And I just want to say that if you guys know that you're in the city and you can't do any of that stuff, you could raise quail. You could raise quail inside your house. And so there's don't don't ever think that you can't do anything because wherever you are, you can do something. I mean, I taught my children and I, I started learning about the plants that grow out just as weeds. I started learning about those things that I could eat. And even though my kids weren't interested in learning, but when we walked through the yard, I would say, oh, look at that plant. That's called a whatever. You could eat that if you had to. And so even though they didn't want to learn, and just in a way that was non-threatening to them, I started teaching them about the plants that just grow around here that they could eat. Um, am I out of time, Adam? No, you're you're fine. And I appreciate that you're doing all, all this stuff for other people. Uh, you have about a minute left, but yeah, and there's a delay, so I didn't want to interrupt you at all. Sure. Okay, I'll finish up. Let me just say this. I, we, we were without power for six days one time when we had tornadoes go through, and the homes, the homes that had um, generators, 
they were so loud and people from blocks away knew who the people were with generators. And so, and people that knew I was a prepper, like even the kids in my family came over and asked me for another bag of charcoal. And you'll be stunned at the amount of neighbors that don't even have candles, that they will come to you. And just, just remember that, that, I, you know, I'm remembering that and I, that I need to double up and be willing to share with my neighbors who will not have a clue. Think about when it and gets really bad. And the last thing I want to share, I think it's so important is, Yeah. Is it if um, if you're a believer, if you ate today, it was because your heavenly Father provided for you. And remember that He sees the sparrow and He provides for them, and they don't know even to ask Him. And you are much more precious than all the sparrows, and your heavenly Father can provide for you. Fear is your enemy. And God will provide for you. Well, Julie, um, it was a, it was a blessing to have you call in tonight, and I think that you are setting an example for a lot of the other Marfugal family members. As far as you doing those kits for the women in Nepal, more stuff like that can be done without just most people. What they do is they'll yeah. donate to another place that does it. Why, you can do it to yourself. To, you, you can literally find these people on the Internet, find a good cause to do it, and make your own instead of going through these big conglomerates that most likely aren't even helping in real life. They're giving 5% of what you are giving them to these people, and the rest they're putting in their pockets and setting up 50 other uh, fake you know, uh, things. You guys can do things that matter a ton to people in other countries. One thing I fear, though, is that very soon we will not be a first world country and we're going to be having people from other countries send us stuff because that's how bad it could get but again not to fear mm -hmm. if you I, like i always say you've been watching my show for a year if you don't fear this kind of stuff and if you the the main fear comes from the fear of death other than that if you get if you accept that this isn't scary stuff mm -hmm. this is just preparing for life preparing preparing for what's coming at you well, thank you so much for calling in, Julie. We are out of time now. Is there one more thing you want to say before you go? God bless you. Thank you. Goodbye. All right. You have a good night. Julie, that was Julie calling from Alabama. Some of the nicest, most amazing people I know are from Alabama. Alabama, Kentucky, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Those are all my, my good friends. Uh I guess my two best friends are from here because I grew up with them here. But the the four people that I know that are just like genuinely just Southern hospitality, just incredibly, incredibly polite. They're always from Alabama or Kentucky or one of those states. Uh, again, I've my uh, one of my friends, my one of my black friends from Kentucky. That man is the most polite, just incredible incredible person I've ever met he's just so down to earth and he's so polite and you just don't get that up in Seattle in Seattle you guys got to watch some if you don't know what Seattle's like it's the Seattle freeze now it's completely changed it used to be a family town it used to be like scenery and hikers and all this now it's just uh these con these uh young coder guys that make twenty thousand dollars a month have no respect they don't they're not they're socially awkward just they call it the seattle freeze because nobody says hi to each other it's like a hazing when you get here it's just stupid i want to get the hell out of here if i didn't have so much family here i would already be in somewhere like alabama tennessee texas somewhere like that i would actually i would love to move to texas uh houston or something something like that you guys i love you so much and i can't say enough about it <clears throat> Uh, I do have, let's see here, just want to make sure, I wanted to hit this real quick, world's loneliest elephant kept in chains for 35 years, finally given new home with pals. It says Kavan, the elephant, has known nothing but mental torment and a life in chains for the last 35 years. And for the last eight years, the bull elephant, 
who lives at the Marigazar Zoo in Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, has been totally alone after his companion, Sahali, died. The two elephants had shared an enclosure since 1990, but in 2012, Kavan was left alone. So eight years ago, his companion that he was with the whole time died. And remember, elephants are the ones who actually die and they, they will go to a grave site. They'll, they'll go and they'll actually have a memorial. They'll uh, go to where that animal has died. Even after that animal is long gone, 10 years later, they will go back and visit that spot. They have grief. They remember it says, after it emerged that Kavan was reportedly tied up at all times, hundreds of thousands of people signed a petition for him to be given a new home, one where he would be better cared for. It was backed by some of the biggest stars on the planet, like Cher, horrified at what was happening to the elephant. That's him right there. It says, four years ago, zoo bosses inst insisted that Kevon was no longer chained, but his long-awaited new mate never arrived, and the elephant was forced to spend all his time alone. They claimed he had only had been chained and suffered violent outbursts, but there were also disturbing reports that Kevon had been beaten to try to control his temper. How do you beat somebody to control their temper? That doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, you're angry? Let me punch you until you are happy. To make matters worse, Kavan was confined to a pen just 90 meters, meters uh, by 140 meters with little shelter, which meant he had no respite from the baking sun. Temperatures can reach a sifting 40 Celsius, which is over 100 degrees, I believe, in a Salamis in Lassabam, which there was no shade for the lonely elephant. Okay, Dex always puts this in here. Dex, is this going to get better? Because this is, this is just getting worse. The elephant was regularly said to be swaying and bobbing his head in this enclosure. Heartbreakingly, even his keeper, Muhammad uh, Jahal, said, I have hardly seen him happy. Even as recently as last month, campaigners said Kavan's conditions had deteriorated even further. Dr. Emil Cahal uh, from Charity Four Paws said, due to the lack of any exercises whatsoever and inappropriate diet, his toenails are in very bad condition due to the lack of proper foot care. Okay, there's got to be, is there a rainbow at the end of this? Well, Adam, the, the, the rainbow was in the beginning of it. Uh, the, the story here is, is pretty horrible about this poor, this poor guy. But, you know, he is now on his way uh, to, to better times in, in a sanctuary. Now, this is a Debbie Downer, but apparently he is now being released. Again, um, yeah, the more I read, the more I pissed off I got. They, I, I know, wasn't it? That, that was very at the end, and then you know, put the bad stuff in the beginning. So, it it does. God, no. Even in the beginning, it talks about how his best friend died. Back you know, up. Maybe that maybe the rainbow is just the headline of the, of the article, but the the point here was that he was finally moving on to uh, to a, a refugee. Uh, a refuge, uh, 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 no, no, reserve. I'm, I'm Sorry. super happy. You know what I mean? Elephants are the most amazing uh, animal in the world. They are. They are absolutely. I mean, they're so magical. Like even in movies where they use them, uh, where you see these images, or even in storybooks where they use them to ride on in uh, in other cultures, how they ride them into battle or these things, right? Um, They've always been this mystical, just strong animal. Even in in uh, what was that that show, uh, Game of Thrones, where they had the mammoths that they were riding mammoths into battle and things like this. Uh, it the elephant and the mammoth and in in general, just that animal is just so freaking magical. What's really crazy is how smart they are for s such a small brain, and the fact that they feel grief and all these things. It's just really crazy how they uh, are loving and they can be hateful, how they can remember. That's what's freaky. Uh, they can remember people. They'll, they'll even remember people that were at the zoo. One, there was one story I read a few years ago where this, uh, this guy that visited threw stuff at the uh, elephant and one time hit him in the eye. The elephant remembered him eight years later and attacked him. The, the same guy ended up admitting later that he 
got him in the eye with something and and he charged through a fence to get at this guy because eight years later he remembered that that guy threw something and it poked him in the eye in fact he had a uh, uh, a damaged iris after this guy threw the thing so with one eye this guy freaking spotted this guy and was so pissed off he went through a fence to get him I thought that was pretty amazing and you know the guy might might have deserved it but um, I don't think the, the gentleman died, but he was thrown across the pathway or something. I thought it was a pretty crazy story. Either way, crazy things happen all the time, every day, and we're here to cover it here on Marfugal TV. If you guys do get a chance, make sure to like uh, the show. Trinity Red or Blue Pill Hi Ho Kermit the Frog here uh, says, Thank you for your support during my recent cancer battle and caring. Congratulations on your adorable baby Jack, too. I appreciate you and everyone. Love to all. Um, everybody is praying for you, Trinity. It's really sad to especially see one of my mods going through this because we have been so close over the last few years. Um, I hope that everybody else is praying for it too. I know that you don't want, you don't want, uh, pity. Uh, you are such a strong woman and everything that you do is just absolutely amazing. So I'm sure, uh, fighting cancer will be no different. And then Jason Grant, thank you for your support tonight. You can always write something there. And then Federico Alpizar, thank you so much for joining and, uh, welcome to the Fugal fam. Thank you for subscribing. And as always, if you subscribe during the show, you will get a shout out. All right. One more uh, just reminder, if you guys do want to support us in a way, you guys can go do marfuglenews.com slash earthing if you've ever grounded. Or if you've never grounded, either way, I would say check out the movie, that upper right-hand link, marfuglenews.com slash GT. And then if you decide to support us, you can go to marfuglenews.com slash earthing. It has changed my life and my wife's. Uh, she actually knows when our mat is unplugged. It's pretty crazy, especially when she was pregnant. She noticed right away. All right, Dex, it is lovely having you as as my crime fighter in uh, in partner in crime something. Heck yeah, brother. You got uh, less than four minutes left. All right. On YouTube. Perfect. Well, thank you. I'm going to hit uh, YouTube first. Uh, DLive, you guys, amazing, amazing people over there. Thank you so much. It is now officially time for the shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shoutro. More Fugal news every single day. Fugal family, show me the way. More Fugal news every single day. Fugal family, show me the way. Shout out to Susan Donahue. Uh, we miss you here tonight. Hope you hope you are doing well. Gone Girl. It's a late show, so I understand you're East Coast, but I hope you are doing well. I have been afraid sometimes when I don't see people. My internet mom, Tony Higginson. I hope you are still alive. It scares me after losing four members this week. Two, sorry, two members. Four members total in the last couple of months. 